Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, we're looking at this idea of equilibrium, and it will lead us to uh, something you probably are familiar with, at least a little bit, uh, Newton's first law of motion. We'll get to that. So why study this idea or this, this uh, set of conditions that we call equilibrium? So understanding equilibrium helps us do really cool things. Uh, if you want to keep an airplane in the air, uh, you want to keep you want to design a building that doesn't fall down uh, you know the buildings that fall down is kind of frowned upon um, well you're going to want to understand equilibrium and uh, and, and people tend to like uh, to be able to at least once in a while to achieve a sort of steady state uh, you know driving at a constant speed those sorts of things so what is equilibrium exactly a state of equilibrium is when forces acting on an object are completely balanced, leading to no acceleration. Notice what this doesn't say. It doesn't say whether the object is moving or stationary. Uh, it doesn't say uh, that there are no forces acting on an object. That, that would actually be uh, pretty darn impossible. And so it, it's, it's not about no forces. It's about uh, the forces being balanced or canceling out, if you will. So, uh, what, what's the big idea? So, Aristotle, uh, way back in the day, and then, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand years later, maybe, uh, people like Galileo and Newton came along. They thought of motion differently. Uh, for example, uh, the way Aristotle would view motion is that a force is required to view motion because the natural state of any object would be at rest. So the natural state is uh, it's at rest and it's at rest. And uh, if, if you can't quite make out what this is, there's the you know, neck of a guitar because that makes it more cooler. So Aristotle believed that this idea of something being at rest is its natural state and it prefers to be at rest, hence it stays at rest, and that a force is needed to maintain motion. Well. Aristotle thought this way, and a lot of people did. I think mostly everybody did, uh, if you go back far enough. And the reason, you can see this. That's not going to go anywhere until I apply a force to it. And while I apply a force to it, it is moving. And when I stop applying a force to it, there's no motion. So that seems to support Gal uh, I'm sorry, Aristotle's idea of, of what forces do in this idea of this natural state of rest. But there's a problem with this, and the problem is what Aristotle couldn't see. And th there's, there's also this sort of gray area where I can get this going, and when I let go of it here, it didn't stop here, it stopped there. So uh, in between, I wasn't applying any force to it, and it was still moving at those locations in between. Um, let's get to what Galileo, Newton, and, and other people of that era started to figure out. Well, this idea of inertia. Not that an object being at rest will, will always try to be at rest. It's that, well, uh, objects keep doing what they're already doing, essentially. And that force is needed to change the motion. And this is the idea. This thing gets rolling across, and its motion clearly changed because it was moving over here, and now it's not moving. There was a change in its motion. And Aristotle couldn't see it, but obviously we have friction. Friction in uh, the uh, wheels and the axle as it turns right here. I, I suppose a tiny bit of air resistance as well, but this friction is the big culprit in these axles. And that friction is a force changing the motion from, from what it had and slowing it down, causing it to stop. And now it's just staying there. And so this idea of what forces do and, and how they affect motion it is, well, not new for us, but uh, uh, relatively, um, <laughs> well, greatly important, actually, uh, and people like Galileo and Newton were, were figuring out uh, that, uh, you know, how, how to sort of uh, find all the nuances along with this. So it turns out Aristotle was wrong. Now, he was a really smart guy, but he happened to be wrong about this. He just couldn't see the friction, couldn't sort of conceptualize friction as being another force changing the motion. So, uh, what about equilibrium now? 
So we have two different kinds of equilibrium, static equilibrium and dynamic equilibrium. So we'll look at this dude uh, standing, just standing there on a skateboard. And so velocity is zero. Uh, we identify a positive direction to the right. Okay, fine, we've got the skater, we've got earth. And uh, so we ask ourselves, what are the forces acting on the skater? And uh, so we have a free body diagram. The force is acting on the skater. Well, we have a gravitational force caused by Earth and a normal force. Well, actually, also caused by Earth, uh, supporting. And, and we see that the forces are balanced. That's really key. Therefore, acceleration. And we're going to start looking at this acceleration in the x direction and acceleration in the y direction because they technically are, are, could be different. Uh, but there's no acceleration in the x direction. In fact, there, at this time, there are no forces acting in the x direction. And the acceleration in the y direction is also zero. Well, there are forces acting in the y direction, but they are balanced. And therefore, we have equilibrium. Well, what about dynamic equilibrium? So static, no movement. We, know we generally don't concern ourselves too much with using the term static equilibrium versus dynamic. We just say equilibrium. And you have to be very clear what that means. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not moving. We would say equilibrium, it could be moving equilibrium. But that means velocity is constant. Any kind of equilibrium means the uh, acceleration is zero and the forces are balanced. So let's look at dynamic. Uh, got skater dude and positive is to the right. But now there's a constant velocity and it's not zero. So there's motion. What are the forces acting on the skater? We got the force of gravity downward. We've got the normal force upward. There are no forces in the x direction. And this is kind of interesting. Uh, skater is moving, and just like this little toy, there would be friction with the wheels, and, and even more so than this toy, there would be some air resistance. But we're, we're sort of ignoring that if we could, if this was an ideal situation. Well, there are no forces acting in the x direction, and therefore um, you have no acceleration in the x direction. And the forces acting in the y direction are balanced. That uh, force of gravity and normal force are equal, and so there's no acceleration in the y direction. So we still have equilibrium even though there's motion. What about situations where the forces are not balanced? Let's look at this. No equilibrium. All right. So we put Aristotle on a skateboard, teach him a lesson, and um, positives to the right. Skateboard's on Earth. And uh, we do a free body diagram of Aristotle here, and uh, we're going to say, well, he's slowing down. Velocity is decreasing. All right. What are the forces? Um, Earth is pulling Aristotle down, force of gravity. Earth is providing an upward support force, normal force. But what would be causing the slowing down? What would cause velocity to decrease? There must be a force, and in this case, it's a force of friction. We haven't really looked at friction in detail yet, but we will soon. Because there's movement, I'm gonna call this kinetic friction. Don't worry about that at the moment. But notice something here. The movement is to the right. This unbalanced force, this unbalanced kinetic friction force, is to the left. The movement is in the positive direction. This force is in the negative direction. Well, what does that produce? So what's the result? Eh, we see forces in the y direction balanced, no acceleration in the y direction. In the horizontal x direction, we see acceleration in the x direction is negative. It's in the negative direction. The acceleration will always be in the direction of the unbalanced force and that's in the negative direction. And this is an interesting thing. There's, there's more to it. We see the movement, the velocity, in the positive direction. The acceleration is in the opposite direction, the negative direction. And that matches creating the slowing effect as so the velocity is decreasing. All right, so that would not be equilibrium in that case because you see an acceleration. Now, what does this all get to? Uh, to wrap this up, this brings us to something very important. So, of course, I put it at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Um, first law of motion. Newton ha is, is pretty famous for these three laws of motion, and I'm sure you've heard versions of them before. Um, the law, first law of motion, sometimes called the uh, law of inertia, and that's a word that uh, well, both Galileo and Newton are famous for. Law of inertia. Okay. Newton's first law of motion. So what does it mean? An object continues in its current velocity, and that means both speed and direction. They'll both continue the same speed and the same direction 
unless an unbalanced force acts on it. That's it. That's it. Objects keep doing what they're already doing unless there is an unbalanced force acting on it. Now flip that around. If you see an object, if you observe an object to change what it's doing, it changed what it was doing. Now it's motionless. You know there must be an unbalanced force acting on it. There, it's non-negotiable. It, it's, it's an absolute. You can, you can count on it. Guaranteed. This is not a guarantee. So, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. Oh, I almost forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, on this piece of paper, uh, I, I left something out. What, what's missing? It's a little tiny detail. Not critical. But something's missing. Do you know what it is? Thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.